guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Philosophia Dare to Be Wise. It's by Cognito Ergo Meeple, and it plays 1-6 to six players, takes about 45-120 to 120 minutes to play, and is for ages 14 and up. In the game Philosophia, you're going to be playing as an ancient Greek philosopher from 2,500 years ago. You're going to go through the timeline and attempt to gather these labyrinth tokens, and if you can get three and end the era first, you will be the winner. However, if there's a tie, you're going to engage in a type of debate, and the best debater is going to be the winner. Now, debating is actually going to be using cards that go back and forth, such as counter cards, not simply just a conversational game, but in fact gathering these cards will take place over a number of rounds where you're attempting to achieve certain um, advancements, placing schools of thought, followers down certain continents, as well as the ability to gather specific debating cards. If you can do so with those labyrinth tokens and win the game, you will be charmed or deemed the uh, most intelligent person in Greece. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, and then I'll show you how to play, followed with my review. So here we have the game Philosophia, and it is all set up for two players, but let's go ahead and get into what you get in the game. And as you can tell, you're gonna get the box for the game, the board, and a bunch of these tokens here. This board specifically is one to three players, meaning you can play a single player variant with specific cards that you will utilize, but otherwise, for two players, you're gonna be setting up just like this. There are some sophistry cards here, which will shuffle as well as some syllogism cards. There's going to be these uh, specific cards in which you're going to be basically bidding on that you can go ahead and shuffle and place here. These are the different oracles that you can gather throughout the game, and then the different space tokens will be placed on the board based on the color variant. There are these wonderful little coins here that you can go ahead and gather that you'll be using to purchase certain things like schools of thought. There are player boards, which will be uh, allowing you to place these specific tokens on them. There's going to be schools that you'll be adding, as well as followers, which you can see over here. This is actually the setup for each of the players. These are builders that will allow you to help uh, build schools, and then you've got these things over here, which will convert the followers of other players into your own followers. You'll have these specific little trinkets here that will allow you to uh, purchase these cards here. They start off locked, and they'll flip over. They're like wisdom cards, and if you can get all three of them. It's going to give you a uh, more monetary value as you progress throughout the game. Every player is also going to be getting these guys here, and they are the philosophers, and uh, they have little head busts of them, which is really nice. Uh, additionally, you're going to be getting these cards here for every player, as well as a player reference that tells you the victory conditions for the game and the game actions that you can take on the game. So, that had a setup. Well, it's pretty simple, really. You're going to be shuffling these two decks and placing them here. There's a spot for them that it shows you where to place them them, as well as these cards here. There's also a spot there. Each of these tokens are going to shuffle up randomly and deal them out to these spaces here, and uh, they're going to have specific bonuses on the back, so make sure you don't look at them. Just place them down. There should be extras depending on the number of players you're playing in the game. Each player is going to start on a specific area of the game board, and it will tell you on your player board well, what starting items you get and where the character starts at. When you place your character down, you're also going to put all your followers in these little boxes here. They have little student hats, as well as all of your schools uh, you're going to be placing them down below here on these spaces which will have specific uh, areas for them to go to as well as when you place your schools on the board there's also little areas as you may or not, may not be able to see there each player is going to get three wisdom cards that start off locked but as you progress throughout the game they should become unlocked giving you some types of bonuses there's an olympic request that has a specific requirements that you're going to uh, have to try and complete and if you do so you're going to basically get the three labyrinth tokens you need to win the game to progress the timer down they uh, have a certain requirement that is different than the average victory requirements throughout the game. Uh, this player here is Socrates, and he's a little bit wealthier than the other players, so he's going to get three of these coins to start out with, whereas Homer over here is going to get sophistry cards, syllogism cards, and then one single currency as well as where they place. And that's pretty much the setup for the game. Obviously, I have another board for the four to six player variant of the game, but we're going to use this one just to explain how it works. The other things on the time board, as you know, is the this timer is going to start on 119, uh, 1194 BC, and it'll travel all the way to 146 BC, which is basically the end of the game, provided somebody has completed the three achievements required. And uh, this space over here is going to have four other action spaces in the game. 
Players are going to go back and forth taking turns until the end. So we'll go ahead and show you down below all the different actions in the game that you can go ahead and take. And uh, then we'll come up and I'll give you my review. So we're back to the game for two players. But like I said, you can play with more players. And the setup is basically the same, but may or may not have a different board. We've got our followers and our schools and all of our starting resources, as well as the Olympic quest card, our three wisdom cards, so on and so forth. In the game, you're going to be getting this wonderful little player reference card that has your game actions and your victory conditions here. And basically, on your turn, it's pretty simple what you're going to do. You're going to simply move on any space of the board here, all these little circles you can go ahead and move to, as well as these four areas as well. And if you do specifically move on these areas, there are certain actions you have to take, whereas on these other spaces, you'll have specific basic actions you can take. And it tells you right here what you can go ahead and take and what you don't, what you cannot take. Based on certain spaces, you might actually have these apocalypse uh, acropolis actions which will let you search the oracles on a space like this and so on and so forth that tells you down below what it works so let's go ahead and talk about some of the game actions the first one here so this player here will go ahead and start the game and he can go ahead and do the first thing if he wants by moving to a certain space so let's say he goes over here when he moves to that space he takes the token when he takes the token he can choose to look at the token and keep whatever it says uh, and then discard the token or he can uh, place the token on his board. Now the reason why he might want to place the token on his board is because if he gathers all of the same color tokens on his board, that is going to score him one of these wonderful little labyrinth tokens, which you need three in order to end the game and hopefully win the game. Uh, so you kind of have an option between all the colors. But let's just go ahead and say he gets this specific token. So he's going to go ahead and discard this. He's going to take this specific token uh, from the pool over here and places it into his pool. Now greens are not going to be accessible for a player to gain that specific labyrinth, but there's still blue, black, and red, and yellow here. After he goes to the space, if there is a token, he'll get to do that. And if there's not, he's going to take uh, one of the actions. Um, this one here is an oracle. So he could choose to go ahead and look through the oracle deck based on whatever it says. And this one says Delphi. So we're going to go ahead and take the Delphi deck here. And you can go ahead and select any one card you want. With the oracles, what's interesting is you can only go to each of the oracle spaces once to pull from the deck here. So for instance, maybe he wants this favor of the oracle. If he gets all three of them, one from each of the decks, that is going to score him a labyrinth token which he needs three of them to win, so that could be useful. However, there are other abilities that will give him certain um, advantages in the game, whether it be uh, on, a, on playing this card, you may take an extra three actions as long as they're available on a specific location, or maybe you play this card to unlock one of your wisdom cards. So oracles have specific really, really cool effects, and he'll just go ahead and take this guy here he'll take that and place it somewhere on the side of his board that's one of the three he needs but you gotta be careful because if anybody else takes one of them then you're not going to be able to secure one of those specific labyrinth tokens and then of course that would be the end of his turn he moved did this token if there is one and then he took an action now let's go ahead and use this player here and he'll go over to the space here he'll go ahead and flip this over he will decide to keep this so he's going to go ahead and place it on his player board hopefully he can get all of the black because that would be very beneficial for him to get one of these tokens next let's go ahead and see what actions he can take so the first action he can take is right here and that says place a follower cube on a location and you can only have one per location per player so if he wants, he can take this little follower and place it down next to the space he is currently residing in. Remember, you can only place one per area. And the reason why you're going to want to do that is because after you've placed all mine on the board, that will allow you to take the action to gather one of these. The other action he could do is he could take a labyrinth, oh sorry, take a labyrinth token obviously is an action, but that is after you secure whatever requirements there are. And these are the victory conditions that will meet the requirements to take these specific labyrinth tokens pay two tokens to hire a builder and take a builder token. So for instance, he has money. He's pretty well off. And I guess this actually was Homer. So this, this here, he'd take these two tokens here. He could then spend them and he could gather a builder. Builders are useful because it lets you build schools. He could also pay a sophist token, which would be this one here, to change his opponent's token to his own. So for instance, if he had this specific token, and one of his opponents had this piece here, one of his followers there, he could spend this token here to then switch his opponent's follower to his own follower. Pretty useful ability. He could also pay a builder, so if he wanted to take this action, he could pay one builder token to build a school at his current location. He'd spend that, he'd take this, and he'd place it on the location where the building resides next to the space. 
and that's a useful place because uh, whenever somebody goes to a location and does an action on that location, they will have to give you a currency if they have one, a single coin, whenever they use that space. So there's reasons to build schools of thought at certain areas. You can also earn money tutoring. You'll take one token as an action, one of these little coin tokens, and you'll gain one additional one for every single wisdom card that has been unlocked. So you can get two as opposed to one if you have one of these uh, guys unlocked. The Apocalypse uh, Acropolis actions are you can move the timeline forward. So if I chose to go over here, I can move this timeline forward, which is the way you're going to end the game. Because as this thing goes along, once it hits this space here, the game will end provided that uh, one player has at least three, or it has exactly three of these Labyrinth tokens. When that happens, there's going to be a final debate. Uh, this space over here is the bidding area in which you'll go ahead and everybody will look at this card. The player who plays there will look at this card, decide if they want to bid on this one, or choose the next one randomly. So they could choose to flip that one down, put this one on top, and now they must choose to bid on this one. Players will secretly hide coins in their hand and reveal, and the person with the most coins is the winner. If there's a tie, the person who landed on the space wins. If it's not the person who landed on the space, then no one wins. And this will go to the player who wins or be discarded depending on the outcome of the event. Over here is where you're going to be doing some debating. There are sophistry cards and syllogism cards. You'll start the game with some if you're specific characters like Homer here, but the way it's going to work is there's a back and forth debate. One player is going to play one card, the player who he chose to debate against will play another card, and uh, there's cards that say what they beat and what they are beaten by, and the idea is you're going to be trying to beat other players' cards and gain them into a discard pile until somebody choose, until both players choose to stop, basically, in which case the player with the most cards in their discard pile wins, and that player takes one of these little debate tokens and places it on their player board. If they get three of them, that's another victory condition as well. Over here, we'll allow you to take two sophistry cards or one syllogism card, but if you are Socrates, you'll be able to take two syllogism cards instead, and these are much better than the sophistry cards. Uh, there are location-specific actions, like the temples area, which, as we explained, you can go ahead and go to a space like this, and if you have four coins, you can study for one of these tokens, or you can spend one of these tokens to unlock one of your wisdom cards. The last action you can take is the oracles, which I already said if you go to the specific location here, you can go through that deck once and pick a card and take that specific card. Those are pretty much all the actions in the game. And uh, the victory conditions are as follows. You uh, have nine followers, so you've placed all nine followers down on the board. That's one victory condition to get you one of these guys here. If you have four schools down in four different locations, that's another three wins in a debate. Uh, if you unlock all three of your wisdom cards, if you can score all of the specific colors and place them on your board, or if you gain three labyrinth symbols from the oracle decks, like I showed you over here. And then the final way is if you are able to complete your Olympic request. These have some really strict requirements, but if you're able to, you get all three of your labyrinth tokens. Remember the last thing is when you gather your third labyrinth token, take the number that is the lowest, because that will symbolize a way to beat ties. So the person who is the first to gather the third will gather this. And if in a debate there's a tie, the player who has the lowest number will win. The last thing you need to know is after this thing hits here, the player with three of these tokens wins. And if there's multiple people who have three, then players in order from these numbers here are going to debate each other. So if we had a three, a two, and a one, if this player had a three, this player had a two, this player had a one, then what would happen is debates would follow as this. Uh, if a three and the two would debate each other, and then at whoever won would debate against the first player, and whoever won there would win the game. Which means that the first player will have to debate a lot less because they ended the game a lot faster and had this specific labyrinth token. And that's a basic idea for the game uh, Philosophia, <laughs> in which case you are going to be deemed the smartest man in Greece, uh, the most intellectual thinker. It's got some really cool different types of cards in it, and we'll go into the details of the game above where I tell you what I think about it in the review. So before we get started, Philosophia is going to be a game I'm probably going to be biased towards. And the first reason is because it is a Greek philosophy game, and Greek slash Roman era, or just any pagan culture in general, is going to make me really, really want to play the game and the theme. And the first thing I think about when it comes to these games is, does the theme interact with how you play the game, and do the cards interact with that era? 
yes, this game does that. And this game does that very well. When you are playing as one of the players, so for instance, if you're playing as Socrates, you're going to be getting this player board, which gives you everything you need as far as where you're going to be placing things down on this board. And in addition, the different characters are going to have different starting items based on the type of philosophy they had. There's also a nice amount of explanation as to uh, what that specific philosopher is going to be known as, what uh, history that philosopher has, etc, etc. And in fact, the wisdom cards themselves explain certain things about that specific philosopher. So for instance, uh, Socrates, while he was uh, basically being tried for death and was sentenced, he then told his jury, which was kind of weird back then, that he was not afraid of death because if there's nothing in the afterlife, there's nothing to fear. And if there are gods, he lived a just life, thusly he will be treated fairly, in which case he has no fear over death. And then he was sentenced. And it has nice little amounts of wisdom on all the cards for all the different philosophers. There's also these different cards. You have the sophistry cards, and then you have the syllogism cards. Sophistry cards are basically going to give you those, uh, oh, what do you want to call them? They're, uh, the different arguments that would be invalid or logical fallacies, I would say, in which case you'd have like ar argumentum ad balculum, which is to argue, uh, by to win an argument by threatening violence toward an opponent. These are basically not very great reasons to argue, uh, not very good points in an argument. Or for instance, to claim proposition is correct simply because the proposer is poor or an op opponent is incorrect because they are rich. So saying like your uh, value in monetary means does not necessarily mean that you're going to have that same type of value or opposite value in how you argue or how much knowledge you have. Uh, to claim a proposition is correct simply because the speaker is rich and or successful or jumping to an unproven conclusion on the basis of insufficient premises. That's a non sequitur. There's a ton of the different logical fallacies presented in the sof sophistry deck. And then of course, these ones, the syllogism deck is going to be, I would call them logical um, dilemmas or logical propositions, I don't even want to call them, but it's like if P, then Q, not Q, ergo, not P. Uh, these things can also be beaten. All of these arguments can be beaten with specific cards, and it works really well. When you're arguing with other players, you're basically trying to gather the syllogism cards because they work a lot better because they present a more logical flow, whereas the sophistry cards do not do so as well, but they're cheaper and easier to get specifically for certain uh, philosophers over others. So for instance, Socrates is able to gather the syllogism cards more often than other players because that is the type of arguments he would use most likely. You're also going to have the Greek gods involved in the game and that's going to be based on the different deities uh, which you're going to have specifically like the Olympic request. This one is from Ares whereas another one might be from Zeus. You're going to have these little spaces on the board that are called the oracle so like the oracle of Trophonius in which case you'll have tons of different options and these are definitely very very powerful but once you choose one no more can you then choose and players will have an idea of which ones you're choosing based on the locations you're going to because there's only a certain amount of them uh there's going to be these really cool to uh, coins that are used throughout the game which i like quite a lot uh and you're basically going to be utilizing them but they're not the most important thing the most important thing is gathering followers followers and developing your school of thought with actually placing down schools on the board the artwork for the board is excellent it was a great choice to use the old style greek map which has all the different locations and where you're going to be going and teaching and whatnot the different things you can do such as bidding on certain things with currency or using an argument to then in case win arguments which will gain you bonuses throughout the game you're trying to get these three labyrinth tokens and once you do that's all you need but unfortunately the game needs to end and you can kind of choose when you want the game to end because you're going to be placing down your token on that space with the hourglass to move across the different ages but it's going to have a cost, and the cost is you won't get actions, which can have other players kind of catch up. The last cool thing about this game that I really like is at the end of the game, even if you've advanced the slowest and you have the least amount of cards, there's still a chance you can actually win because you're going to be arguing against other players. Now, it's very unlikely if you're playing a five-player game and you get that fifth labyrinth token because you're going to have to argue against everybody in order to win and so there's this big there's this big philosophical debate at the end of the game where you're basically throwing down ad hominems and straw men's and all these logical uh arguments and hoping that you come out the highest ranking philosopher and it does play into that as well uh, there's these busts in the game which are really nice these are nice little 3d printed busts all of this is a prototype so i'm expecting it all to be much better than it is now but as it stands it's really nice for a prototype and i was very impressed with it as well 
of the game in a two-player situation is probably not going to be as good as in a three, four, five, and six-player situation because there's going to be a lot more stuff going on, a lot more reasons the players have to go to certain areas that will contain your school to pay you money, more cards are going to be used, there's going to be a larger amount of debates, and less back and forth. In a two-player game, it's likely that you're going to know who's won probably about three-fourths into the game, but of course there's that still chance where the second player can win based on the arguments that they're throwing out at the end of the game. Uh, overall, this game is a lot of fun. I enjoy the theme greatly, I enjoy the style of game, and just the back and forth bringing me back to ancient Greece where you're playing as the philosophers and all of their wonderful little things. It, it's, it's really nice. I think you history buffs out there are really going to enjoy this game specifically. For people who don't like this game, if you are a two-player board gamer, this probably isn't going to be for you as much. If you don't like the theme of this game, it might be one to stay away from just because of the fact that the theme is so ingrained into the game. If you don't understand a lot of the cards, the different philosophers, it's probably not something that's going to draw your attention. The game works well, it flows fluidly, and it's really rather easy to play on your turn. It's, these, these turns are really quick. So there's not as much analysis paralysis in this game at all. You're going to be like, I want to move to that space and do that specific action. And on your next turn, you know which action you're going to want to do. Because most likely, there's certain actions that will benefit you based on how you're trying to progress throughout the game. There is also a lot of different victory conditions to gain the Labyrinth tokens. So as you go throughout them, some of the victory conditions are going to be better for you and give you more rewards. Like unlocking wisdom cards will then give you more money when it comes to tutoring people. But it's going to take a lot longer to get those cards, uh, where it's a lot easier to gain the specific victory uh, cards from going throughout the deck and pulling out the the bonus, uh, which, which we call it, Favor of the Oracles, gathering three of these cards. This will only take you three turns to gather, as long as you gather all three, but the risk of maybe somebody else gathering one of those cards, in which case you've lost two of your actions, and in a three or four or five player game, that can actually happen, and losing actions is no good in this game. I like this game a lot. It's a lot of fun. Thematically, it's really good. I think for those of you that have seen this game and are interested in this ancient, ancient like theme, you're going to like it. Uh, that's pretty much all I got. I was trying to think of negatives I didn't like, and like I said, I think the only thing is just maybe two players is not as cool because when we play it with more players, it's just a lot more fun and engaging. But even at two players, it's not so bad. And it does have a single player variant, which I haven't played. But, uh, I don't know, if you've already played it in the comment section, go ahead and let us know what you think. Anyway, the game is currently on Kickstarter. Take a look down below on the link. Outro. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this game, check out the link down below. It's on Kickstarter. You can go ahead and pick it up right now. It's ending very soon. So I strongly suggest you take a look at it. I just, I really love the theme of this game. Like I said, I am, I am definitely biased toward it because I love ancient Greek and Roman games. And this is so unique and different as far as the theme goes. Uh, go ahead and check out my website, unfiltergame.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. No giveaways on the site right now, but there will be shortly. I'll post something up as soon as I finish with the last round of shipping, as well as our live streams. Every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST, you can go ahead and watch us play games live. We give away games. It'll be a lot of fun. We have new guests coming on every week. And next week, we're going to have a new guest on as well, uh, featuring... I got three games out, so I guess it'll be a surprise. I'll post it on the Patreon backers. Patreon, by the way. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to battling it out philosophically with you next time. Bah, 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 bah. Wise men talk because they have something to say. Fools because they have to say something. A short saying often contains much wisdom. There is nothing permanent except change. I cannot teach anybody anything. I can only make them think. It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. There is a time for many words, and there is also a time for sleep.